How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the uh, Dragish Energy Podcast. This is the podcast that I was supposed to do a lot more consistently this year. However, because I am human as well, I have failed into delivering on this consistency on the podcast, right? Uh, one of a couple of reasons is because I've been traveling a lot now that the shows have kind of restarted. So I've been going places. Even now, as we speak, I'm currently in Helsinki. I'm going to do a show here tonight. I was in Turku yesterday. I was in Tallinn, in, uh, in, in, in Tartu. I've been doing this part of the world at the moment uh, in my tour. And tomorrow I'm going to go to Tampere. So if you're in that uh, region, come down to my shows. I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to post this, so it might not be relevant. But let's do a little bit of a recap. What has Dragovich been up to that he has not been able to do this podcast? Well, very simply, you know, uh, at the start of 2022, which is the year that we're in at the moment, I came back from Mexico and the restrictions have started to slowly lift across Europe, meaning that I, uh, I was basically doing shows. I was doing shows in Berlin. I was doing shows at uh, different locations in, in, in Central Europe, some of them in Eastern Europe. I did Belgrade. I did some shows in Prague and so on and so forth. And now, you know, trying to do more more things as the summer draws near. And if you're not familiar with the um, the cycles of stand-up comedy within Europe, summer is usually a down cycle because as a stand-up comedian, it's quite complicated to compete against the sun. People want to be outside in the sun, enjoy the freedom, the vitamin D, the lights, and not my vitamin D jokes. Haha. <laughs> But uh, it's been a pretty interesting start of the year so far. Of course, the pandemic has still been um, relevant, was relevant, reduced in relevancy as the relevancy of the war has increased. Uh, speaking of the war, I got the Slava Ukraine merch. Hopefully it'll come to an end. But uh, supporting, supporting, sharing, do everything you can. Donate if you can to the, to the Ukrainian relief efforts. Hopefully this madness ends. Um, I've been trying not to write jokes about the war. It's pretty intense. Uh, it's also pretty pretty brand new. Uh, too, too soon, too soon, too soon. But uh, what have I been up to? What have I been up to? Well, I've been trying to adjust to the new world. Is this, a, is this exactly what I've been trying to do? Exactly. Yeah, I've been trying to adjust to the new world. And what is the new world for Dragosh? What is it? Well... You know, after the whole pandemic, the past two years, I did put a lot of content online and, you know, my TikTok presence has grown now officially past half a million subscribers slash followers. Tiny applause for, uh, for, for success, for, for growth, for progress. I'm quite happy with the progress so far and I've been trying to go to a lot of places to be able to get access to the people. That's been one of my uh, main areas of focus so far, trying to get out there, meet the people, write new material, create new content. Um, let's talk about TikTok for a bit. Um, if you're not familiar with my growth on TikTok, that was, or you might have been, a lot of the growth was kind of, it's interesting, a lot of times timing is a very important element in this type of growth, right? Because what happened, for example, for me was I had, well, it's timing and preparation because I had footage that I kept on a hard drive and during the pandemic, I was able to edit it, right? So that's kind of generated my growth on TikTok. And a lot of that growth was effectively, um, obviously, it was material, but also crowd work. And I think people really missed crowd interactions, which led to the growth during the pandemic. Of course, it's also funny. Um, so this year, basically, um, kind of trying to manage that level of growth, see what the... Try to transfer some of the audience into different uh, platforms. I mean, you know, half a million TikTok followers is a great thing. I'm quite proud of it. Uh, however, it also it's also very platform dependent, which means that TikTok, if TikTok decides to ban my account tomorrow, I'm fucked. Okay, so I've been quite uh, aware of this potential risk. Not that I'm gonna start doing particularly controversial jokes that are gonna get me banned by TikTok, but it's not good to have so much reliance on one platform, right? Because in the past, creators have relied on one platform, and then when the platform stops the growth or or stops showing your content or like Facebook that starts charging you to push your own content to your own followers, then that usually leads to the downfall of the creator. So I don't want my downfall to be generated by TikTok's greediness. I don't know. So as this, is, this is how I think, guys. I, I try to know. It's, it's because I'm doing quite a lot in, in, in terms of like for myself with growing this career, I have to think of all the angles. I have to think of the jokes. I have to think of the marketing. I have to think of the growth. I have to think of the risks, okay? 
and platform risk is one of the risks that I'm thinking of quite seriously. So for this reason, I think now the past couple of months I've been focused uh, the balancing. This is just for this is how I this, this is how I this is how I think. I rock in my chair to think. Uh, if you can't see it, I'm also doing this for the for the people that are only listening to the audio. I'm also doing it for YouTube, so I'm filming myself. But the point is. Um, some of the things that have been on my mind in the past couple of months have been how do I manage and sustain and continue growing um, so I can deliver you know the comedy to more people and write more jokes, right? Uh, so the platforms that I'm currently looking at growing again now, Instagram is still putting a lot of work on Instagram, I'm trying to get people to come to Instagram, I'm trying to get people to come to YouTube, I'm trying to different elements and formats. Because TikTok monetization is also crap. TikTok doesn't really pay you a lot of money. This is Dragwish Business Energy <laughs> the podcast. But it's uh, I'm gonna use this podcast going forward to just to just do a bit of brain dump over here, and hopefully you guys like it. If you guys like it, you can let me know what other topics you'd like me to discuss, uh, what other things you'd like me to to mention or give you insights on. But this is an insight into my brain. So yeah, I've been trying to grow the Instagram, the YouTube. YouTube is now almost close to 20K. Instagram is like at 43K, which is great, but it's also still a fraction of what the TikTok growth is. And um, the most important element of growth is for, from what I'm reading. I don't know if you're a marketing expert or, what, or if you are, please let me know if this is right or not. One thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure I get uh, emails from people. So this is why I've done the request a show um, story i do it every day now so if you request a show then let me know your email and also that helps me plan a bit better because at the moment as a as a creator uh without let's say too massive of a fan base the problem is how do you reach how do you tell people that you're in town this has been the biggest problem in order to tell people that i'm in town so far i've been giving money to facebook to letting them know that i'm to have facebook show advertises advertisements to people in a particular town telling them that i'm in that particular town that's a it's a very nice ratio, particular, particular. But so far, letting people uh, letting people know that I am in a particular town has been fueled by me giving Facebook money. And Facebook at the moment is shit. Their advertisement, uh, the targeting ads are crap because of the iOS, um, the iOS updates. So I'm trying to get more places, but I'm trying to identify where can I go without while limiting my uh, my risk, right? So for this reason, basically, I'm getting emails and I check the emails and I see how many people I have in a city. And if there's more than 50, 100 people, then I set up a show in that city. So that way, you know, I also go where the people want me to go. And at the same time, I don't take risk by going to a city where nobody knows me and nobody comes to buy tickets and I lose money. And then, ah, I guess. So this is where I am at. I've been trying also to manage that with the Berlin shows. We're also doing a lot of Berlin shows at the moment, a lot of open mics, a lot of showcases. We've also done a couple of fundraisers for Ukraine. Um, and um, trying to figure out exactly what is the next step. A great milestone has happened in the past weeks. I have did my first 400 seater. 400 people came to see my show in Riga, Latvia. 400 people was a sold out show. My biggest one so far, uh, I've put up some images on Instagram and on Facebook, so I don't know if you're on any of these platforms, but you can see them. It was great. And if you came to the show, thank you very much for coming to the show. Uh, it means a lot. It's really, um, it, you know, like with comedy, you have these little milestones that let you know that you're doing well and you're on the right path. And I think this 400-seater was definitely a very important milestone in my comedy career. So I thank you everybody that participated in it and thank you for watching my content. A of, there's a lot of appreciation and thank yous going on in this uh, in the podcast. In the podcast, um, uh, other elements and uh, elements of my efforts have also go been diverted to writing more and understanding what other topics I can write about. Trying how to there's a lot of strategy going on even in the writing process because at the moment um, you know obviously in Europe there's a very diversified audience, people from all of the places. So you have to kind of write content that you know works universally. So I'm kind of balancing around ideas to make sure the content is relatable, but at the same time, it's also personal. This is this is um, this is a balance that I'm trying to attain when I'm writing comedy for Europa. I want it to be um, relatable internationally, but at the same time, personal and uh, unique to moi. Wow, what a challenge! It is an interesting challenge. 
and so far trying exactly to, to, to write that material it hasn't been particularly easy um, just because like the brain functions you know you have a creative side then you have an analytical side then you know I'm running ads I'm thinking about how to grow and I'm using different sides of the brain and it's very difficult to like yo-yo between them yo-yo yo-yo between them mm. interesting there's a lot of chaos energy happening in this particular episode right because I sat down and I didn't really have a plan. I was like, the best way to just start doing the podcast, bro, again, is to just do it. So this is what I'm doing. It. I'm just doing it. Yeah, and then I have got a couple of shows coming up that I'm quite excited about. Uh, going to Romania for the second time on the 1st of May. I'm going to do two shows in Bucharest. The tickets are going well. I think it's over 200 of them sold so far. So that's great for English stand-up comedy in Romania. And, uh, you know, it's a proof of concept that people want to see the comedy in Romania in English. Then I'm going to London, and London as well is doing well. The tickets are selling. I'm going to be in London on the 4th of May. And then afterwards, I'm going to go to Luxembourg, Paris. I'm going to go to Belgrade, Croatia. Uh, I was supposed to go to Ljubljana, but then the venue canceled. And, uh, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing some growing pains at the moment. I'm trying to figure out exactly how to manage all this growth. Uh, so far, I've had two people that were helping me out with the editing and also the show. Uh, the show organization planning. Shout out to Rob, who was doing the editing for the videos. Well, the subtitling for the videos. And shout out to Pascal. Hi, Pascal. Who's been helping me set up shows so far. I'm just trying to figure out exactly what other areas... I can get people to help me out with. So if you have any ideas on what you can help me out with, let me know. There might be some dinero for you in there as well. Uh, one area that I need some help with at the moment is maybe uh, finding, I wanna find a studio in Berlin. This is what I wanna do. I wanna find a studio to create like a little little environment so I can film more of these podcasts, get some proper material. Because at the moment I'm a bit space, I'm, 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 I'm restricted by space. As you can see, I'm doing this comedy podcast. Is this, a, is this a comedy podcast? I don't even know. This is more of a Dragos talking to himself podcast in my hotel room in Helsinki. Um, but yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for potentially finding a, a room where I can do like a little studio, start filming more podcasts, start filming more interactions, uh, diversify uh, a little bit more away from crowd work and comedy clips and go into more personal growth. I mean, I do spend a lot of time figuring out how to do stuff. Like, I think one of the challenges of being uh, early at the stand-up comedy in English game for Europe is that there isn't a lot of um, there isn't a lot of groundwork that you can follow on. You can, there's not a lot of paths that you can walk. So I kind of there's not a lot of people that have found solutions to the problems that I have. So then I'm forced to find the solutions myself. And in order to find solutions, you need to think. You need to try things. So. And one other, one other thing, another thing that has been quite useful is finding the right tools to kind of make my my workflow more efficient, my my process a lot more um, uh, less, make it less strenuous. Is this the word I'm looking for? Strenuous. I want to make the work less strenuous. So one thing that I'm going to be doing going forward, I found a software that helps me uh, subtitle a lot of the clips automatically, which is super helpful. It's called vid.io. It's not sponsored during this video, but you know, just letting you guys know. So I do want to do a couple of videos where I just like play around with tools and figure out how can I automate or make things faster so I don't have to, um, you know, rely on too many external uh, elements in order to get the stuff out there to you. Hmm. Automation is important. I, ca I care about automation. I think automation is the future and is going to assist us in creating the world of our dreams. I should sell automation software. That's what I should do. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm trying to find tools to better uh, to enhance my content delivery and my content quality. So if you have any ideas of what tool I can use to expand my reach and expand the quality of my content, let me know. I'm particularly interested in identifying how to make better YouTube videos. So if you have an idea on how to create better YouTube videos. Also, I understand that there's a lot of opportunities to grow through collaboration. So if you have any suggestions on any podcast that I should be on or any particular creators that I should collaborate with, whether it is in your own country, it is in Romania, the UK, I am issuing an open invitation let me know and we can collaborate on some projects as long as it's not super time intensive. And by collaboration on projects, I mean, get me on your podcast or you can be on my podcast. Let's make it happen. Somehow we'll make it happen. 
I am not bipolar, I am not schizophrenic. It is just how my mind functions. Sometimes it breaks out in melody, and sometimes it is ASMR-ish. Yes. Yeah, whew, there's a lot of stuff that I'm doing and a lot of stuff in my mind. Also, if you have any recommendations on good books, I'm uh, looking for more books to read. Uh, usually audiobooks are very useful, so if you have any audiobooks that I can listen to, let me know. Ideally about marketing or uh, writing, that would be very helpful for me. Mm, what else? I'm gonna be London. On the f I'm gonna be London from the third of May to the seventh of May. So if uh, you know anybody there that would like to meet about potentially, I don't know, agent representation, and if you could the sort, then hit me up. I'm looking to find some ways of like um, automating some like shows for the UK, like finding a, a maybe like a production company that helped me set up shows. I don't know. We'll figure out. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm handling these problems of scaling and growing, guys. This is what I'm doing at the moment. The world, let's talk, you want to talk about the world? I mean, a lot of stuff has been happening in the world, but to be honest, I've been trying to keep an eye off the world. The news cycle has been extremely consuming. Of course, I think like many of you, I was also very uh, engrossed and consumed by the war, uh, by the news cycle of the war. It's fucking insane what's happening. And fuck Putin and all his bullshit army nonsense. I hope it comes to an end soon. And then Russia can just, you can just like fuck off. Ay. Uh, peace in Europe is what I want. This is what I want. But um, yeah, I've been trying to stay away from the news because it's kind of getting me. It's, it's it's okay. This is it's 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 been taking a lot of mindset. And, and the problem is I can't really do much. I mean, I'm I'm helping in terms of resharing and we've done some fundraising shows, but there's so little you can do. So I've been trying to stay away from the news for the past couple of weeks because it's been uh, I guess a little bit much. And I'm trying to figure out exactly what can I do to you know gain more a bigger platform so i can actually enact change at a higher level going forward i'm not necessarily that's the degree but i feel at the moment you know i think it's this whole idea this whole kind of vibe of helplessness with the world has kind of spread throughout europe so it's kind of like oh we're not doing anything we can't do anything and it kind of sometimes it can affect your productivity and affect your day-to-day -day life yes war is a bummer who would have thought but uh yeah i think have i rambled on for long I think this is a this is a bit of a chaotic for the for the return of the podcast, but this is what we're lo looking with. This is what we're working with, guys. We're working with chaos, chaos forces. This is what I'm working with. But um, let's see. Oh yeah, goals. Let's talk about goals. What do I want to do in the next couple of months? I want to figure out, uh, yeah, better ways of getting content out, and I want to start doing better, bigger shows in uh, cities around Europe. And I also want to write a new hour. These are the main three things I want to do. Uh, get more content out, do more writing, and do bigger shows. So, yeah, hopefully we can do it. Uh, if you have any requests for a city, I'm going to put a link in the bio, and or if you go to my Instagram, the link tree, you'll be able to see the link there to request a show. Let me know where should I go, where are you at, what city, what country, and I'll come. Also, let me know if the singing is too annoying and I can t tone it down. And if there's any particular questions you have for me, or if you have any particular topics that you'd like me to discuss, maybe I'll tell you what books I'm reading. Maybe I'll tell you. I just read Blink by um, a dude. I, the name eludes me at the moment, but um, he's, he's written a couple other books. And then at the moment, I'm, what else am I? Blitzscaling by Reid Hoffman. That's one I, one I read as well, because I'm trying to blitzscale, bro. All right, well, this is enough chaos for today. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast, the return of the podcast. It's real, it's coming back. Woo -woo. We're going to do them, even if they're shitty, even if the sound quality sucks, even if the light's not good enough, even though I have a ring light and a little microphone thing that's close to my mouth now. We are going to be doing these podcasts going forward. So I hope you guys stay on board. And I'm going to figure out exactly how we can do more podcasts for Patreon as well. We're going to do some exclusive content for Patreon or for YouTube subscribing, your YouTube channel members. I haven't really decided which one we're going to figure out. Or maybe I'll do it on Buy Me A Coffee because Buy Me A Coffee has been quite uh, good for helping you guys uh, give me money. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for all the support. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Dragos Energy Podcast. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.